Welcome back to another episode of Heavy Hill Nation. My name's Eric, and today we've got a little bit of a doozy. The load is going to be 16 foot 1 inch tall, and we've got a lot of obstacles we got to overcome. So if you want to see what that looks like, what a week in my life looks like, stick around. Alright guys, so we picked up our load out in Utah, out at the copper mines out there and uh, good God man, we are 16 feet tall. You guys see this is a, what they call a stator, it runs part of their plant I guess, I, I'm not quite sure what it does there but we ran into a couple big problems already and we've only made it a little ways down the road. So my biggest problem is that right here. You guys can see there's a little gap and the gap gets worse as it goes in it's so it's not sitting exactly flat on the wooden crate thing that they made it made so when you step back here you see that it's got a little bit of a tilt to it but things we got to run into yeah, are the problems we run into out here just we got to keep on going we can't really do anything about the crate not sitting right I even had to offset it as much as I could to the other side of the trailer to make sure that the trailer sat flush because with it tilting on that crate like that, it actually caused more weight to be shifted over to one side of the trailer. So we've got that all sitting there. I've got I've got my height full. You guys see my height full there? They're taking their lunch right now. They're gonna eat a lunch real quick because we gotta once we get on the road, uh plan on getting down at least to the bottom of Colorado, possibly, possibly into New Mexico today. But all the lights are working back here and everything, and everything's everything's moving good. I haven't got much movement out of the piece itself with it, even even with it being as top heavy as it is. It only sways a little bit when we're hitting bumps and stuff, so that's good. I ended up having to run with my fourth axle down on this one, so the fourth axle is down on the ground. But uh, anyways, guys, I'm gonna. I'll go back talk to my escort here and then uh we're gonna jump back on the road and make it as far as we can today so i will talk to you guys when we make it down to the next truck stop here All right, good morning, good morning, everyone. I know I didn't get to talk to you guys last night. We actually didn't get stopped until after dark, and uh, it just everything got messed up on us when we were coming through Moab last night. They had road construction, plus it was the weekend, so everybody was out there getting ready to go camping and everything, and we, uh, we planned on going further than this, but uh, daylight kind of, came to an end on us so we stopped over at one of these DOT roadside things big old empty space over here so I'm gonna check everything and then uh, my escort should be here in a couple minutes and then um, we're gonna get out of here man I'm, I'm ready to get back on the road I we didn't make it all that far yesterday because, like I said, we got stopped over there by Moab, Utah for, I think we were there for 
three hours probably about in traffic so it messed up a lot of our day but everything seems to be running okay i'm not losing anything nothing's loose the damn thing's tilted though like crazy that's the it's the only thing i'm not too see how bad it's tilting that way but that's how it's got to ride man it's because it's not sitting flat in that crate that we've there that they got it in it's bolted to it it's just it's not sitting very flat so it's causing a little bit of an angle to it well, i'm gonna jump in the truck wait for my escort and we are gonna get out of here ran into another problem of course so we stopped off to get fuel and i was doing my walk around checking all my securement and everything i don't know if we picked up a nail or what but this tire here is completely off the bead so and obviously being on the back of the trailer i didn't feel anything or anything different luckily this load's not too heavy or else we would have had a huge issue so the escort is getting ready to take off. They're looking for a hotel. If you guys ever need anyone, give them a call. But I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. We're gonna stay the night here. I got the TA working on trying to get a a, uh, a tech out here because I can't get into their bay because I'm too tall for their bays. But the other thing is, uh, the other problem we ran into is I was walking around yesterday, I forgot to tell you guys, and every one of these nuts, all the way down, holding all of these, all these nuts were loose. So we ended up having to go around and tighten all the nuts and everything, because that's the last thing I want is this crate to fall apart while we're driving down the road. So, we're down for the day again, but luckily we got in a pretty good amount of miles. We got about 500 miles in today. And it's loud there's two trucks running there so uh i'm going to call it a day uh they said they're gonna get a tech out here in a couple hours i'm just in the ta parking lot here so they're gonna get a tech out here in a couple hours and then uh we'll be all set for the morning we don't have too far we got about 600 more miles to go and tomorrow being sunday so they're not gonna unload us tomorrow anyway so we'll uh get unloaded come uh come Monday morning but we should be there tomorrow so I'm gonna go sit in the truck and wait for them to get out here to repair that tire all right all right so the TA tech finally made it over here uh, we couldn't go inside the bay because we're too tall obviously and the frames too low to the ground to get up on there they got a hump going in there and I would have got stuck going in but as you guys can see TA techs out here we are getting as as of right now we're gonna take the tire off and then we're gonna attempt 
to patch it. So I will let you guys know how that turns out here in a little bit once he gets these tires off and we take a look at them. We're not even sure what's what's going on with it at, a, at this point in time. We didn't see anything in it. So uh, this could cost me new tires again or hopefully, fingers crossed, there's just a little hole and they can patch it up. So I'll get back with you guys here. We found the culprit. I don't know if you guys could see this, but right, right here somewhere, right here, a damn little nail came through the damn tire. But that's not even the best part. That's not even why I came, brought you guys in here. So the tire's gonna get patched, but he's got a shop dog and I love dogs. Look at this puppy. Look at this puppy. Hi puppy. Hi. <laughs> This is a cool looking dog, man. He's really rowdy, he likes to push. <laughs> so, but I'm gonna get back to it, go over there and get the tire all fixed. And then it's not pushing me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, enough. <laughs> you gotta knock over the toolbox. All right, so I'm gonna go get this all fixed up. He's hooking me up. Then I'm gonna get back over to the truck and we're gonna get it put on, so. Hang in there, we're almost done with this. All right, guys, so the tech made it out here. We have got the tires back out. We are all set. That ended up being the problem was that little that little nail poking through. But this is my tech, and this is how much of a badass he really is, man. He's out here with a broken arm. It's still working because that's what we as Americans do. We work even when we're hurt, man. So, but this is my tech. I want to, you want to say a couple things. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is what we're paid to do. This is what we do. Rain, sleet, snow, shine, it doesn't matter. This is what we do. If you're coming through New Mexico, stop by the truck stop, TA, here in Moriarty, New Mexico. You know, we're the best one in the district. And if you get a chance, don't forget to like, subscribe to Heavy Hall Nation. You guys have a good day. My man. So you guys heard it, man. Make sure you guys stop by here. See my man there. See his dog inside. His dog's really cool. These guys hooked me up pretty quick, man. They got it all taken care of. They told me it was going to be a couple hour wait. He came out within an hour, fixed it all up. And now we're all set. So I will see you guys in the morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to walk around, check everything. The escort's already here. He's behind me. Make sure uh, all the lights and everything are still working. Make sure that tire's still got air. Oh. And good to go. all right so check all these tires check all the securement look how close this idiot parked to me last night there's not even a parking spot here in these freaking morons I swear to god so anyways pretty sure my escort already looked over the row i uh, haven't talked to him yet so have uh have you guys looked over our route for texas yep so we're all set you, you know where we're going cool I looked at it last night. There was a couple little roads that I couldn't really, but all right. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and load up and get out of here. I guess they got the route all down. They got the height pole already up there. So I'm gonna load up, and get out of here. I'll see you guys down the road. Yeah, 
How hard did you hit it? I want to say about four inches into it. Okay, I'm going to go real slow under this. I'm going to pull over. It looks like the shoulder might actually be a little higher, huh? Yeah, keep going that. Alright, I might move over into the shoulder, I think. Yeah, I'm going to complete the stop. Can you see back here to the bridge? Yeah, I can do it. Alright, tell me if you can watch this load for me. I don't know where the hell they wanted us to get off at then. Yeah, there's nowhere to get off. Alright guys, alright, so we have now made it to the TA that we're stopping at tonight. Our route ended up, <laughs> well, the Texas permitted route took us all over the place, so we're still about 200 miles away tomorrow. I told you guys earlier I was gonna I was gonna explain why I was doing that for the ones that don't understand the people you know the the folks that that do this stuff obviously understand what I was doing and uh so earlier you guys had saw that I was I was slowing way down on bridges and I was pulling over to the side or or pulling over to this side or centering up that was me basically picking where the bridge was the highest because my height pole had tagged that bridge meaning that the pole that he has in the front of his vehicle had actually smacked the bridge and there was no exit for us to be able to get off and get back on to, to bypass that bridge so as long as he doesn't like clobber that that bridge we're more than likely going to be okay he was just hitting it with the tip of the the pole and and usually when you have a height pole you you want the height pull to be at least six inches higher than your load. We've got ours set at seven. That's just, that's my lucky number. That's that's why I do it. So I've always had my height pull set at seven inches above the load. And I mean, other people do it differently. It, it's highly, highly recommended that you have it at least six inches above the, above the load. But that's why you guys were seeing me veer off to the shoulder and creeping real slow is because he tagged it and I mean, that time when we were off to the shoulder was the the asphalt on the pavement that the where they've resurfaced resurfaced Jesus I can't even say that resurfaced the road. It, it, it was actually about two inches taller than the shoulder, uh, so it it just made us lower going under that bridge to move over to the shoulder. It basically gave us a little bit more room, and two inches can make or break you. Now, I haven't really talked too much about the load. I mean, these loads now, I know I'm gonna get comments. I know I'm gonna get people out there that have been doing heavy haul for the last 20 years. And they're gonna tell you guys, or they're gonna sit here and try and tell me, oh, that load's easy, that, this and that. This load right here, it, it's 16 foot one inch, all right? I call this a career ender. Because it's right there at that borderline where it's, 
it's not extremely tall it's not gonna be like oh no i can't do this but it's it's still not really short you know you you got a lot of obstacles you have to avoid and why i call it a career ender or a career killer is because you hit one overhead object such as a bridge or anything like that a sign in the middle of the road or anything that that makes you uninsurable a lot of insurance companies won't even touch you because of that so and the, the whole fact of going back to that career killer their career ender is because a lot of the guys that have gotten you know used to doing stuff like this on a regular basis or anything they start to get complacent and they start to think of this as being easy so they don't pay attention they don't they're just they're just i mean they're just driving casually because they've been doing this stuff forever so it that's why it is so important to focus man just focus on everything focus on your route focus on your permits focus on everything and anything that could possibly make this go wrong i mean as far down as my height pole was getting a little too close to me he, he was slowing down and i was gaining on him i i had to tell him a couple times hey man i want you out at least a half mile to a mile i want you in between a half mile to a mile ahead of me so that way if he hits a bridge or something or overhead of object he could tell me before i pass the ramp to get off to get back on you know what i mean i gotta i gotta have time to react so he i mean if he hits something with his pole that's not going to do any damage if i hit something with this doing 55 to 70 mile an hour i'm going to do some damage and i don't want to do that man i i don't want to end my career i don't want to have any issues on the road i don't want to hurt anybody on the road i'm trying to make this load from point a to point b as safely and making sure that that stays intact so but i'm gonna go and get me something to eat I've, I've already walked around and checked everything my escort already left for the night he will be back here tomorrow morning we've got about 200 miles to go permitted miles so we will be kicking this off tomorrow as long as everything goes right so i will see you guys here in the morning when we go to take care all right all right good morning good morning guys so today is hopefully our final day on this load I've got something else in mind that I'd like to go pick up after this, so I really, I really need to get there and make sure that no issues happen and get this done. But we, uh, we, had, we had a little bit of an issue yesterday going under bridges and stuff. You guys saw all that. But today, uh, the, the route looks pretty straightforward. Looks like we might have a couple a couple overpasses we gotta go under. But everything's US highways today, so I'm not really seeing too many overpasses or anything we gotta we gotta try and squeeze under. So I sat there for about three hours last night just memorizing the route so that way I we didn't get confused on anything today. But I'm gonna jump in the truck. The escort is already over there, and as soon as daylight comes, we are out of here. So I'll see you guys down the road.
Hi, we made it. Get out and find out what we got to do here. All right, so we are finally done with this load. So you guys can see we're backed into the big building here. Load is perfect, still made it here. No problems other than the little issues we ran into on the road, but we're not gonna talk about those. So the truck is absolutely filthy. The trailer is absolutely filthy. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get this all unchained, get this all unloaded. Then I'm gonna go to a truck wash and get this, this pig washed because I don't like having a dirty truck. That just bothers me. It's one of those things that I'm, I, I just don't like it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hurry up and get all this stuff done and then I'm gonna meet you guys over at the truck wash. So I'll see you guys over at the truck wash. All right guys, so we made it over to the truck wash. As you guys can see there is a massive line over there. But what I like to do before I get into the truck wash and uh, is I've got, I've got this fancy stuff here, Citrol. So I, what I do is I take it and I go around and you know spray up my wheels and spray spray all the heavy grease areas like my motor and stuff then i like to spray down my motor on the truck stuff like that that way because this stuff first of all this stuff is amazing this will actually make everything spotless it takes all the grease off everything it's it's really a, a very good product uh so if anyone out there works for uh schaefer's and wants to send me a couple boxes of this, that would be amazing. But I'm gonna run around, spray the truck down and everything before we get into the bay while I'm waiting in line here. And then we're gonna get this washed up and get out of here. So I will be back with you guys in a few minutes. All right guys, so I think I've decided for this part of my videos, I'm just gonna start calling it the truck stop debrief. I mean, what, what else can I say? We had a lot of obstacles we had to overcome. We had to go under a lot of low bridges. Good news is we made it safe. That's, that's the best part about every trip that I make is get in there safely, load still intact, everything went as smooth as we could make it go. I mean, there's a million and one things that can go wrong and there's only one right way to get this done, and that's getting it there safely. So, it's an exciting, exciting journey every time you finish uh, one of these loads. But guys, man, if you guys liked this video and you guys stuck around, please give it a big thumbs up. That will help me out with the channel. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, that way you're notified when these videos keep coming out. But as for now, guys, as always, I will see you guys in the next one.